Welcome back for a new touch designer tutorial. Today we will be using noise and the new pop operators to create these type of visuals. Let's get started. Get rid of everything. So we'll start with the new pop point generator. Turn this into a torus. Change the distribution to surface so it's only on the sides. As you can see. I need to use the radius of 1.2. Um, I found that 1.084 works quite well. Then I'm going to connect this to a transform. We're going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees so that it's flat and it's facing up. I'm going to connect this to a noise. So that's all the points move and then we're going to use the Python uh, syntax abs time dot seconds on the translate z so that it will move but this is a bit too hectic so let's 0.2 Move nice and slowly. And we're going to use this. If you press uh, Alt or Option on Mac and N, it gives you the uh, no. That's a little trick. Let's call this positions. Okay, so now we have our positions for our particles or points. Let's use the point operator. Hold your mouse down and press tab and this will open the that create dialog. Choose geometry and we can click it. So what we're gonna use obviously is instancing and use these positions as our translate operations and we can see that we have way more options than when we were using the um, the tops or the chops. So we're gonna use P the P of for position, so it's X, Y and Z, zero, one, two. You can see we have our Taurus donut here. So let's add a camera. Let's add a render. I'll use twelve eighty by seven twenty. You can use something else and put 32 bit float just for a nicer result. Then, what we're going to use, like material, is a line material. Why? Because I want to have a different color based on distance, and this allows to easily do it. Let's use this as material. Turn off line, turn on point. Then we use. Um, we're going to use a little check. If you go up here on the double screen, go into Geometry Viewer. We can see we have what's in our geometry. And we can replace the camera to a nice position like this. We can do is Save View to Camera 1. And this will put what you're seeing now in your geometry as the camera settings. So if I close this. I see our camera was moved to this position, so it's really a good trick. Works really well. You can see this is on our render. So let's press again Alt N. So we have a null. So the RGB key, so we have a black background. And let's display this for now. It looks ass, but just wait a bit. So in points in the line, so let's change uh, we're gonna have to go in colors, I'm gonna put it to blue for close 
and then let's use a pink or purple for far. I think I'll use this one. Obviously, you can change it. And then in the setup, we're going to want to see we can see distance for near. And if you look at our geometry here or there, you can see that the um, colors are changing slowly based on the distance. It's based on the distance of the camera. So you'll have to change this a bit based on how close your camera is to the thing. And then you can do the same for the size of the points. If you want the close, the far ones to be super tiny, or if you want to, like we can make super big, and those over there, Swiss one, that's a bit ugly. So let's do something maybe, something more like this. I don't really want big points, because we're gonna add some a lot of effects on top. This is good. So for now, let's add a null here to start our feedback loop. Obviously, we're going to add a feedback loop. So let's do feedback into a level into this one is important into a mirror. This is the base of our effect to make the kind of Mandela effect, if that makes sense. Add that into a transform. And finally, into a composite. Let me put this into this. Up. And then this comp goes into the feedback. So for the level, we're going to bring just the opacity down in the post to... I put 89. I think 90 works fine. Yeah, we need to change the comp if you want to see something. I use add. It gives a nice. You can experiment with the different ones. They give quite cool. Uh, could give quite good results. So I'll just use add for now. So we have our level. Then for the mirror, we're gonna want to do flip x, flip y. I prefer repeat. And then I'm gonna want to turn this. I found at all. I put 153 in my example. But obviously, it's based on your camera angle, so like just try stuff. And then inside the transform, I'm gonna use the tiling. I'm gonna do mirror and turn this on. And then turn on the rotate. Can rotate by. This will give you the cool shapes. At the moment you can see it's quite ugly. Because we need to add all our post-processing stuff. The first effect we're going to add is the bloom. So this, you'll have to fiddle with it. And I think I will, um, I will make the far. In the far points a bit smaller. So not better. Okay. So you can change the intensity of the bloom. Just honestly fiddle with it. Find something where it looks like this is too bright. This looks good. I don't really have any, any tips for the bloom yet test. Is too much. Oh, this is good. Okay, then after the RGB key, I'm going to add the RGB delay. This is in the palette up here to filters all the way down. So RGBA delay. This will give a delay based on the RGB value, so we can see it's super strong. I like to tone it down a bit. I think I put minus six, minus four, and minus two. So we get this long thing effect. Then I'm gonna add, I have um, a filter, so it's noise filter I'm gonna add. 
Just to get this just grain, the way she wants. And just a noise with a set to random with a really small amplitude, and it just adds this grain on top of everything, so you can steal it. And if you want to easily make these type of things, it's super easy. You just do a noise, add this, set it to random, GPU, 0.1, output is uh, times noise, I think. And then the C will be ABS time per second. So this is it. And then if you want to save it, you right click over it and click to collapse selected. This will give you a component with it. And obviously you need to add an out. This you have your component. And then you can recall it like green filter. And then to save it, you just go into your My Components, create a folder if you haven't done, and just slide it to here. Then we have a grain filter forever and ever. I don't need it, so this was a little trick. So, this is already looking very cool, and um, you should tweak with the rotation of both, and this gives you all the shapes you would ever want, like changing this mirror looks good, so no. And then so let's make it audio reactive. So an easy way, very easy way to do this is like we did we usually do. So audio find in choose a song. Use a song of the intro. Audio device out. I don't know why it's always so loud. So let's skip this. Generator no tools. Uh, audio analysis. Connect this, and what we're gonna use is the mid. I think that's the only thing I use. You could use way more, and you could use it, like for example, to change the rotation or to do whatever you want. So select or to change the. So we're gonna just use it to change the. So the number select. Oops. And I just put mid. But this is what we're gonna use. And we're gonna do is rotate the torus based on how the music is going so we got, this is super small so I, I found that by multiplying it by 50 gives us better results and then because we want it, the rotation we, it needs to always be going up so if you use a speed chop you get exactly that effect so it just counts up and then use this in your transform that we added at the start for the rotate Y. You see, it rotates based on the, the music speed. And voila, this is the whole effect. I recommend messing with obviously the colors, you can change them, changing the this mirror and this transform, changing the rotation and just by doing that you can do very, very usually with the transform you can make really cool stuff like look at this effect, like you could on a bead drop do this and make it look very more intense so here we go thanks for watching, see you next time